There actually used to be a podcast I really liked listening to. It was called 10 Minute Podcast. And it was uh, Will Sasso and like two other guys. It was fucking hilarious. I miss that podcast so much. They did like 600 episodes. And I think he just like, I don't think they had time to do it. Like they would do a couple because they literally were 10 minutes. So they would record and do like six or seven at a time. But then I don't remember why he said they stopped doing it. But I was super bummed because they were super funny. They would just do like wrestling, wrestler impersonate. It was funny. What were you going to say? What was Will Sasso originally in? Because uh, it wasn't just Vine. I don't know. I mean, he's like an actor. Like he's look it up. he's in a uh, Su- Super Troopers too. He's one of the Mounties. He's like an actor. He probably did a uh, voiceover too. Like maybe he's a voice actor. I was gonna do it, but I don't want to do the clickety clack, clickety clack, because my keyboard's loud. Because I have a pretentious gaming keyboard that cycles multicolor constantly. Ooh, yes. Flex harder. The buttons are green. Now they're blue. Now it's purple. I actually want to That's change blue. that. I want to make it all red. Because I like red. I don't know. I like the multicolor. It's it's neat. I'm not seeing anything that I really notice, like, other than random stuff. Then I guess he blew up with vines for the millennials. So TikTok's just vine now, right? Kind of, but the do thing, people do okay, the singing? I, I said this. Yeah, they do. They do everything. I've said this before, and the reason that I don't like TikTok as much as Vine is because if I go on YouTube and I type in lemon vines, I'll have Will Sasso. But like, I try to find that one TikTok with the cheese, and I typed in cheese TikTok, and nothing came up on YouTube, and it's just a bunch of TikTok compilations. Can't you search on TikTok? I don't have TikTok installed anymore, and also I don't even know what to search. Like, what do I search? Beeping song? Cheese. Where she's eating the cheese? To search eating cheese. Okay, I'm going to download TikTok. Because, yeah, doesn't your phone have, like, 20 terabytes? Yep. You're fine. Come on. How, how big is TikTok? It's going to only be, like, 6 megabytes. I, I feel like I'm close. How big is it? 60. Oh, it's kind of close. It's like social media. I kind of want to download TikTok it's funny. and do TikToks. I would do them. I don't know what to do, though. That's Yeah, it's I'd like, have to think about TikTok it. TikTok is almost like, a it's skit. just so popular now. Like, yeah. That's how you get famous on the internet now, TikTok. I'm going to open it. I'm going to look up. I have to make sure my volume is Well, up. I mean, it makes sense. You know, history just repeats itself. There were these Vine stars, like the, what were their names? The brothers, the one who found oh, the dead body. Too. What? Oh, God, oh my the God. Paul brothers. Yeah, Logan Paul. There we go. Jeez. Stick. That's a dead, dead... No, he's probably fine. He probably has a lot of money. No, he he wasn't dead. Didn't he, he fight was someone? A... Wasn't he in, like, a fight? Yeah. One of them? They fought, Casey like... Casey something, right? Casey Neistat? Oh, no. That's he didn't the fight. Vlogger. He's the vlogger. He's, like, a dad. He's like Look, a... all I'm finding is people eating cheese sticks. Someone put a cheese stick in the, <laughs> in the fucking... Yeah, you're right. TikTok's Bert okay. Bert Beans. Bert Beans. In the oh chapstick. And then Bert's Bees. <laughs> TikTok's okay. <laughs> I'm going to type in, like, beeping song. Maybe I'll you find make it. Make sure your audio is down. I don't want to get copy writ- written. Because, God forbid, the person who filmed that listens to this podcast and sues me. Because I know that will happen. It's almost like do, 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 do. do it's like do, drops. Do. Yeah, it is. Like water drops. It is, and now it's just a bunch of like. I love how that. we're doing a podcast and you're just looking up a TikTok. Yeah, I've. She. It's like it. two cheese sticks. Yes. And she's. Oh boy. She's quite large. She looks like she ate probably the rest of the cheese sticks. I'm just going to type in TikTok compilation. <laughs> oh, man. I used to weigh a lot. It's okay. I used to be fat. Compilation. That's okay. You can make fun of fat people if you were fat. That's how it works. Is that fucking Belle Delphine in the picture? Oh, the bathwater girl? Yeah. I bought some of that bathwater. It's right over there. If you want to try some. It's not that good. I preferred uh, drinking bleach. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all night. You're listening to my podcast. Fuck you. <laughs> Did you find it yet? No, I, there's a million TikTok. We need to move on. 
Keep talking. I'll, I'll, I'll keep oh, talking. Oh, boy. Lovely weather we're having right now. Here in Pennsylvania, it went from 70 degrees to 20 degrees in one day. Huh? Global warming's fake. Am I right? Technically, it was 44 degrees. My car is Well, this is going to get colder. It's very windy today. I wouldn't have been surprised if there was like a tornado there or some shit. There was snow shit. when I was driving oh, wow. home. There was just, it's weird. It was not much though. I came home and like all the chairs that our neighbors have were like literally in the parking lot. Our trash cans for the whole ha- or apartment complex were just scattered. I had to collect them. I couldn't even find the one for the third apartment. So I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. Sucks to I, be them, I, I guess. I typed in eating TikTok compilation and it's just like, mukbang tiktok compilation most disgusting mukbang TikToks. i do a mukbang podcast i guess that is that's not even a mukbang then right because it has to be filmed does it have to be filmed is I a think. muk does is that i'm gonna look up this mukbang TikTok is lost i'm looking up the definition of mukbang <sighs> this is the number one gaming I podcast should ask the gen zers that i work with what is that tiktok muk called mukbang I don't like how Google isn't auto-correcting that. I feel like I'm going to find some... Oh, no. I, I spelled it right. Oh, no. It's I spelled M-U-K. it wrong. Yeah. Like the Pokemon. See? We got it back to gaming. I put a C in there. Mukbang is a live online audio-visual broadcast. Well, okay. We're missing the live or the visual and live, so... We have to go on Twitch. Damn on... it. Foods What's ranging that? from pizza to noodles in front What's of a that? camera. One... It, I think it's just called eating. Or yeah, it's IRL, I guess, now. But there you go. TikTok sucks because you can't search through. It needs a better search system. It needs tags. It's just hashtags. It, oh, okay. But you could just tag it, and then it's lost in the abyss of these millions of TikToks. But there are funny TikToks. I feel like a boomer, you know, but like the hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh? That's probably funny ones. We just you gotta keep up I with like TikTok those. and like, know the TikTok memes. Yeah, there's literally like a new meme every day. Exactly. Seems. All the Gen Zers I work with are like always quoting TikToks. I'm like, is that TikTok? And they're like, yes. Yeah, or, and I'm like, of course it's TikTok. Yeah, I feel so old. Attention span is short. Of course the memes don't last that long anymore. Yeah. What were we talking about? TikTok? Cheese? <laughs> Mukbangs? Ah, yes. Mukbang. I think my uncle thought that either this or my Twitch was a mukbang. Remember he told me that? That was funny. I do remember that. And then he got me a turkey leg for Christmas. He's like, do you do a mukbang? And I'm like, what is that? Like, how does my uncle know what a mukbang is? And he's like 50 something. He goes, he's a college professor. I don't know. Yeah, he's cool. (laughs) Shout out to Uncle Randy. (laughs) I, what's his what's that youtube videos he does but, tech with randy or yeah, something like that like it's on I youtube told him at christmas that i thought i told him i wanted to do it. it we did i, I said i, I would do it he and he's like all right and i was like i want a cameo in it that was like a year ago that wasn't this christmas yeah, it was just, that was like last no, christmas. christmas i swore i told him last christmas because no. we we didn't watch those i i thought we watched those a while ago because he talked about them at Christmas. Ow, He's cool. He showed everyone Ow. how to use uh, VR and how to access the pornographies. <laughs> the chair is farting again. Yeah, okay. It's going to break. It probably will. I'm not we saying need a that. We kitchen set. It's, yeah. Well, it's not one problems. like 10 bucks. It was 100. <laughs> That's a good deal, though. That's cheap for a kitchen set. Maybe we can find one for 110 bucks. Yeah, it'll last better. Dude, adult problems is I keep thinking I want to put stuff on our walls that have just been blank for over two years. No, it's not. Oh my god, this guinea pig is fat. I want to... That doesn't play well on the podcast. I'm sorry. I want to put something like right there. This yeah. plays way better. The, the area yeah, I'm yeah, pointing the, to that they can't even talk to. about that. At least they know. can picture a fat guinea pig. Hey, let... Let's start this podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Level With Me podcast, episode 34. I'm joined here once again by my girlfriend, Megan. Hello. How are you doing? Good. You cold? Not right now. I got my cozy moo-moo on. <laughs> All right, if you open the drawer over there, we're going to start the mukbang. That one has uh, chicken Alfredo in it. 
Ew, I don't want drawer Alfredo. <laughs> it would have like lint and socks Ew. in it. <laughs> it would have socks in it? <laughs> Do we not move the clothes? We just put the Alfredo on top? It's just a, like the thing you show me that's drawer of piss. It's like drawer oh, of no. chicken Alfredo. You just like get tongs and pull it out. Ew. <laughs> but it's fresh every day. Why would it be gross? There's no heating pad. No, there. something would and magically I just took heat that it. Training and I'm certified at work to be a food great transition. Safety. How's work going? Good. It slowed down a lot after the holidays because people need their peppermint mochas all year. You got I tipped a hundred grand. I wish. By Someone, Jonathan. No, Larry gave us a hundred. Oh shit! He put a hundred in the tip. Shout jar. outs to Larry. Yeah, shout outs to Larry. He writes books. He does. And fucks bitches. Yeah. True. <laughs> Larry, if you're listening to this, sorry. He doesn't ask for water. He just gets his no, water. No, he asks. <laughs> he asks. He asserts his water cup in we, your he space. He walks over and we know. We're like, you need some water, Larry? And he's like, yeah. And we give it to he's him. He's like, this time I want Clorox. We don't have Clorox. We have restroom cleaners. What the bleach bottle This says. time I want a full cup full of mocha drizzle or Ew. syrup. <laughs> Ew. What's the thickest syrup? This caramel? White mocha or that. toasted white mocha? Yeah. Oh, smoked butterscotch. Oh my god, now we have a smoked butterscotch. It's so thick. I'm literally like lifting How many every time C's? I pump it. Eight. And white mocha's. We all eight. know what white mocha looks like. Yeah, it got all over me the other day at work and I was just coated. Yikes. In. Nut. Yikes. Yeah, I love coconut. Yep. I love all nuts. Nuts are delicious. No, you don't like cashews, because every time I get you cashews, you're like, I hate cashews. When have I said that? You said that when I got you cashews. You're like, I don't really like cashews. What the fuck? That's what you said. When do I say, I love cashews. Oh my Holy God. shit, when did I say this? You're like, I don't really like cashews. I love cashews. No, you said that you don't like I seriously them. love cashews. Oh my God. I love cashews, I love almonds, I love peanuts, I love pecans, I love walnuts. Like every kind of nut. Pistachio. No, it happened when we were in Cape May and I said, those cashews look good. And you're like, I don't really like cashews as much. I didn't just want just cashews, but they're delicious. Cashews are like one of the best nut. What the fuck? What? <laughs> okay. Let's whatever. do a nut tier list right now. Okay. S rank cashew. Cashews. Peanut. No. Almond. No. Are they at least A? Yes. Peanuts not, no. Peanut has to be A. Peanuts are good. S is cashews and like... I think pecan could be S. Pecan Pecans is, are fucking good. Also, what are those ones that... Is that pecans where they put the sugar on them and they're in the little cone and you eat them at the farmer's market? Like at Zern's? Those are either almonds, cashews, or pecans. The pecans, yes. Cashews Almonds are an A. Almonds are A. It depends on what you do with, like, a plain almond is A, but, like, if it's, like, a salt and pepper almond, like, that's S. Yeah, so we'll say almonds are A. Yeah. B, I'll say, is peanuts. Peanuts are B. Can I put pistachios in B? You can. Pistachios are great. You can. That's my fucking i I'm put walnuts in B, too. Walnuts are, I think, A for me. Chestnuts are good, too, when they're roasted. Oh, I forgot about it. Hazelnuts, too. I never really ate just a hazelnut. Well, it's like what Nutella's made out of. Hazelnut spread. And cocoa. What? Don't they put cocoa powder in? I don't know. It's chocolatey, pretty much. Hazelnuts Chocolate are good. Hazelnut, yeah. Yeah. What about coconut? I don't count that as a nut, even though it technically is. It's a tree nut. What about macadamia nut? What's that look like? That's the ones in the cookies with the white chocolate. I'm going to look Macadamia nut. Quick. It's kind of like... Like the white chocolate ones at Subway? Yes. Oh, I typed in macadamia butt. Oh, that's probably good, too. Images. I should are Should have pulled up visual aid to help. You know what I don't really like? Those Brazil nuts, the big boys and the mixed nuts that are, like, as big as your pinky. I wouldn't say they're that bad, though. I'd probably put them in C, though. Those are good. Those are A's okay. for me. Okay, we'll say B. I'm well, looking me right at the in the picture. middle. I'm I'm going A. You can go B. Well, we have to come. To, uh. Fine. Did B. we miss any? Probably. There's like millions of nuts. Is a coffee? That's no. A, that's a cherry and a bean. Well, that chestnut. I never had a chestnut. Wait, I like, thought you know, I said chestnuts. Chestnuts roasting on the fire. I definitely said chestnut. 
Chestnut's good. Jack Frost nipping at your it's nose. It's not Christmas anymore, bitch. We still have but all like... our Christmas decorations all of them. downstairs, not put away. Even though it's the middle of January. What are you looking up? Well, I was looking at chestnuts, and I think they're good because when I worked at the nail salon, this one girl. Her oh, name water was chestnuts? Yang. No, she brought in, like, chestnuts that she had cooked at home, and you just peeled them and ate them, and they were really fucking good. Okay. Yeah. So that's, like, a B? <laughs> I consider it an A, but that's what you can think. <laughs> you think well, your dumb shit, I'll think my dumb shit. I think we're out of nuts. I think we're done. Well, there's probably more. I just don't I know I think them. we can print out this tier list and mail it into Nabisco and say, guys, we got it. <laughs> you don't have to try anymore. Or no, not Nabisco planters. They make yeah. the nuts. Mr. Peanut. When are they going to put him in Smash? That's a good when segue. When they stop putting in anime characters. When they stop adding blue-haired fucks. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Maybe you should put it in the right order that you want to talk about. Well, man. I just improvised. It's okay. <laughs> I should probably put everything in the other way Ooh, now. Bear with me. One payment has oh, posted. she's getting money. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. losing money. I'm paying my <laughs> credit What's cards. What's this one? Oh, that's important. Don't worry, guys. I'm just looking over the stories. Okay, what were we talking about? Shut the fuck Anime up, you characters. stupid Twitch. Do not follow... I don't know who they are. Hey, uh, let's talk about some gaming news, guys. This is the number one video game podcast out there in the world, in the universe. And we got this story here from IGN. Uh, it happened literally today. Uh, the world cried with uh, t both tears of joy and disappointment as they added Byleth into Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, the eighth blue-haired warrior. What are your thoughts on Byleth? That's not, not Byleth. I... That's Linkle. <laughs> I don't really know shit about Fire Emblem, so it doesn't really affect me. But it seems like they do have a lot of these type of characters. Like Anime Sword Man or Woman. It's not that many Woman, actually. I mean, technically, Byleth could be a male or woman because they're the main character of their video game. So it's like you pick your, you know, gender, whatever. True. But hey, people got pretty upset about this on Twitter, as they do. That's what Twitter's for. Yeah. I was um, reading the... I saw you retweet something, and I was reading the replies to the retweet, <laughs> and somebody posted the video of the New York store. It wasn't open... Or it wasn't on YouTube. It got shut down. Or taken down can't talk um and apparently it was really quiet no one really gave a fuck at the nintendo store in new york and usually they're mad men i need to watch that it was taken I need down to find it'll, be, it'll probably be re-uploaded someone somewhere. will have it yeah that's pretty telling not to mention i'm pretty sure the youtube video of the reveal of byleth has about like the same amount of likes and dislikes like it's almost even and we're talking about a lot of likes like probably at least like I think the last time I looked, it was like 20k or close to 20k. So like literally split, like 20k likes, 20k dislikes. Um, I guess since I kind of qualify as the Smash guy, maybe I should take a moment here to talk about my opinions on this character being revealed. Uh, first of all, I want to say I don't really hate this character this character just doesn't do a lot for me because i've never i also haven't really ever played any of the fire emblem games um but i think the character does look interesting in terms of other in the in terms of the other fire emblem characters although well, i tweeted about this but i'll reiterate it i just think nintendo really fucked themselves with how they released these characters because if you look at how this fighter pass was in the beginning, it was Joker, then it was Hero, then it was uh, Banjo and Kazooie, and it's like, oh, these are all going to be, like, new characters from third-party, like, companies that aren't Nintendo and stuff like that. And then, what is our final character that we get hyped on that is literally unknown? There's been nothing announced for them. This Direct literally came out of nowhere a few days ago. Oh, it's just another blue-haired sword person from Fire Emblem please get excited and it, it's very anticlimactic. there's literally like no hype biggest blue balls but again 
that's just me. Like, some people are super happy that Byleth is in the game because Fire Emblem Three Houses sold extremely well and was very highly received in terms of uh, criticism by fans and critics. So, yeah. The way I look at it is it's like, hey, Byleth's in the game, now we don't have to worry about it. And they're literally making six more characters. I guess that's kind of the next story I was going to talk about, but there's six new characters, guys, and now we don't have to worry about another Fire Emblem character because I highly doubt they're going to put another fire emblem character in the game because literally this is the representative of the quote-unquote new fire emblem character because this game came out last year um but other than that yeah i don't i i also just think it's funny like you were mentioning about my tweets uh i'm kind of like i said i'm chaotic neutral i like seeing both sides like people who are super mad that buy lists in the game and then the defenders i don't know it makes me laugh um i don't know if I'm trying to see all the, like, me costume stuff that I was showing you. Oh, here it is at Wait, the bottom. Wait, was that real? Yeah, that's real. So, in addition to the Fire Emblem character, Byleth... That... No, that wasn't fake. There's They also added weird Alta Altair from Assassin's Creed. That one was super weird. There's a rabbit hat from Rayman Raving Rabbits, like the stupid ones. Wait, so Cuphead's actually in it? As a costume. That's so cool. Yeah, and there's tracks from there's like a music track I from thought that Cuphead. Was fake that you no, were showing no, me that's that real. Made that. Yeah, that got announced today. And oh, then that's so cool. yeah, Cuphead like is a complete like skin for the Me Fighters, and it looks really good, kind of like Sans. Like they literally made the whole costume. Usually it looks a little more blocky, and you can see the Me's head. Um, and that's the big one. The other two were Mega Man X and Mega Man Battle Network Mega Man, which aren't really that important. That's just water. Okay. Um, but yeah. A lot of people made the joke that that was way more hype than actually Byleth, and I agree. Like, seeing Cuphead was pretty cool. Even though I still think Cuphead looks super weird 3D, because it does look kind of fake, it but it is weird. cool. Um, and other than that, uh, they also announced in the Direct that there will be, of course, the Fighter Pass 2, but hey, hey, there will be six new characters, not five. And this DLC will go until December 31st, 2021. So they're going to be making characters for quite some time, guys. So uh, if you were mad that Sora or whoever you wanted wasn't in the game, I, I think you might have a chance. Maybe Goku can finally get in there. Who's a character you want in Smash? Just throw him out there. Uh... Any character. It doesn't even have to be a video game. Shrek? Shrek, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can also buy the pass right now and you get a pretty cool uh, me costume. Did you buy it? I think I asked. I haven't it. bought the season pass two yet. Oh, wait. You... Wait include i don't know if you can buy it now maybe you that have to wait 20. the 20 january 28th is when byleth comes out so that's like a week and a half two weeks what day is it actually i was gonna look it's, it up it's, it's it's like two weeks yeah, it's a tuesday days. that's super weird but yeah that you know it's it was big news that there was a another character because there was five last time now there's six even though we don't know any of them but again i I think it's good that they just announced Byleth now, even though everyone's like, oh, I don't really care. Oh, it's, it's Fire Emblem character. But, like, now, th just think how cool this next announcement of the char the next character will be, because it's got to be someone hyped. They're not going to just do Byleth and see the reaction of fans and then do, like, nothing afterwards. But, again, I think Nintendo just really fucked themselves. Like, why did they make the characters the way they did? Like, who would put Banjo in the middle? Like, that's... To me, that was such a crazy one to get. I, I feel like people are probably just disappointed because, like you said, like, they put, like, the better ones earlier. Yeah, even Joker. Like, Joker's on, like, super cool. Oh, anime character. Yeah. From Nintendo game. But again, there are a lot of people who are hype about... I don't Sorry. know. No, it's okay. You can go on. Um, but yeah, that that is what it is. Uh, I... Get excited for 8th blue hair waifu anime. <laughs> There's a girl, so, you know. And, and the music sounds good. The stage looks cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, In terms of the character, if they're being good or not, like, competitively, I'm going to say I don't know. It's way too early to know any of that kind of stuff. Um, they look interesting. Uh, they have a lot of cool... Like, I, I kind of talked about it earlier, like... The, the main gimmick that they have is that they use all different type of weapons. So technically it's yeah, not it's not just a sword fighter. They have a spear, they have an axe, and they have a bow. And the sword also like turns into a whip. So like each of their different moves 
are different weapons. It's not that they switch weapons. It's just that their moves have different types of range and stuff like that. So that makes it a little interesting, but yeah. And um, Sakurai said that the character is more slow and about range and is not great with grabs and the recovery looks kind of bad. So again, time will tell if this character is good competitively, I guess, but I mean, I guess to some people, they don't really care about that. They're just happy that they can play their uh, 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 teacher man or woman. Because Byleth is a teacher in the well, game. Well, also, not everyone plays competitively. They just no, play for fun. I know. That's why, yeah. So, I feel like, I don't know, it's kind of like Nintendo could also, could, like, cater to the people that play competitively. But I feel like they also don't want to do that. Like, they're kind of trying to do, like, a mix. Like... I don't know. If this per if this character isn't like good competitively, like people shouldn't bitch because it doesn't all have to be competitive, you know? Yeah, I you know. Can throw some characters in there that are just fun to play. Usually the DLCs are pretty broken. Yeah. This character could have good it seems like there's broken stuff. I I feel like another reason why a lot of people are let down when I look at Byleth here. It's like Sakurai is talking about how he wants Smash Ultimate to be like this museum of video game history. And then there's Byleth. Like, who? Who is this anime? Well, maybe they're just <laughs> trying to also promote their own game. I Yes, a lot of people suspect that yeah. too. And I hate to say it, but I watched the trailer. I'm like, I'd like to play that Fire Emblem game. Fuck Byleth, but I'd like to play Fire Emblem Three yeah, Houses. thing is working. Because now you want to buy Because <laughs> Fire Emblem Three Houses game. looks pretty cool. And I heard it's a good game. Speaking of Nintendo, uh, there was new details about Super Nintendo World Theme Park, which is in uh, Universal Studios Osaka, Japan. And uh, what was I going to talk about in this article? It's been a minute. There was a trailer release. They kind of showed... They didn't really show anything in this trailer. Let me quickly... This is muted already. But it's kind of like, like they show people playing the game. Look, the guy's in space. It's cool. They get a wristband. And there's like, there's like a music video, but it's weird because like they don't really show anything with the park other than like there's this girl, I don't know, it's is Charlie she famous? XCX. Yeah, it's uh, featuring Charlie XCX. Okay. Um, and there's like a Mario song, they're all about to die. That's that's safe for parks. Uh, they're dancing. They're, they're doing some TikTok. They're Fortnite. They're, they're Fortniteing. There's a little bit of the Mario Kart ride. That's about all you see of the ride. And then mario's there he's like oh give me more money <laughs> i i don't know i mean it looks cool but this trailer was like Hashtag nothing we are mario i mean it, there's like something with the okay, wrist you know they're having those hats for sale the, but... the wristband is probably a fast pass. no 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 no. it's i was trying to get to the part where it's like yeah oh. you play a game with your phone in the wrist pass or wristband while also just being in the park because it's a theme park like it's a little it's almost like Galaxy's Edge, but it's Mario Land. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's a cool trailer, and the song's actually not too bad. I kind of like the song, and it has, like, Mario music intertwined with whoever that lady is. I think she sings the song Boom Clap. I think that's her, like... Okay. You know what song I mean? I'm not going to Oh, look, here's it. some uh, other very small pictures. Uh, there's different wristbands. Yeah. Gotta collect them all. Uh, there's like stuff about the park. I don't know. It, there's some sort of integrated thing. Do you think it's like a Disney Disney World like kind of does where this? It's almost like they'll have something like a Soren from Disney World, where you're like in a big screen and it's almost like you're there. Probably not. Because it said it was like a video game. They were a little vague. It could be like the thing in Disney where you walk up to like mirrors and pictures and stuff, and then like a screen will pop well, that's up. That's kind of lame. I don't know. I don't know what it will be. Uh, hey, speaking of lame things, <laughs> that a couple days ago they announced on a Pokemon Direct that the Pokemon Sword and Shield is getting a new DLC season pass, y'all. You thought that game looked bad? Well, pay us $30 and we'll fix it. God, I'm so negative. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't... Look, there's Mega Blastoise. Look, he's cool. He's he got, cool. like, all these cannons. His he's shell's like red. red. Blue. what else we got there's mega Ew. or these aren't mega these are gigantamax excuse me or giga oh, gigantamax what yeah 
It's like there. He looks so gross. There's uh, there's That's cool. Calrex. He's like a weird like Is dog. Is that a tomato on his head? I could be green tomato. There's oh, cub foo, and then he evolves into That's some ursi foo, which has two different forms, and then they have also a Gigantamax form. Because it's Pokemon. Slowpoke. There's the Galarian Slowpoke. Pro- oh, and there's Mr. Sniper. That's a one so of the starters. So the question is, do you think games fuck up on purpose? And then they're like, This is a new Zapdos. This money, or, Give me this This money. is a new Articuno. This is a new Moltres. What? Do you think games like fuck up these games on purpose? And people like have to buy the DLC to like get the good shit? Where they're like, oh, this sucked. Oh, but here's better DLC. Just buy it. And then it's like yeah. to make more money. Yeah, sometimes. That's like straight up EA marketing tactics. Like, hey, we didn't, we didn't have time to put the good stuff in the game. Why don't you just pay us and then we'll put the good stuff in the game. They're adding a lot of Pokemon. That's what this all is. But a lot of those are free. Because, like, you, I don't know if you heard, but the big controversy with... Uh, pokemon sword and shield is that you couldn't bring all your old pokemon over so they are adding more you can bring over oh uh, yes ice there's a big bunny he's got a big soccer fireball because it's uh in europe they like soccer is that a drum set tree oh yeah that's uh grookey's final evolution he's like a drum monkey guy and he's like a big drum lord grookey's cool i like grookey um but yeah there's two expansions i'm trying to look for the name of them the isle of armor and the crown tundra and it's thirty dollars no it's thirty dollars for both oh and one comes out by the end of june and the other one will arrive in fall and something that i thought was cool which is again going back to what i was talking about where i'm like oh this seems like stuff that they just could have worked on and made it better but in pokemon sword and shield there's this area called the wild area, which is just like an open world and Pokemon just spawn in there and people are in there and stuff. But that's only a small part of the game. The other part is just like regular Pokemon where you walk down like roads and hallways and shit. Um, and th- in these expansions, both of them are like the wild area. So they're just open world areas, both of them, which is kind of cool because people just assume that's what Pokemon Sword and Shield was going to be like. But that was like a segmented part of Pokemon Sword and Shield. So, yeah. What are you looking up over there? I'm just checking my emails. Oh, okay. You can tell she's very enthusiastic. I'm not going to lie. I don't really care about this new Pokemon game. Okay. I never really played Pokemon games other than the party games because Sean, if you're listening to this, my brother, he never let me play. <laughs> 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 I, was, I kept looking at it. And I'm like, I'm waiting. There's an ad for like a Viagra yeah, pill. Yeah, Blue Chew. We're not sponsored. Yeah, I wish. Don't say their name if they're not going to pay you. Have better sex, it says. I don't can't can't confirm if that's true or not. Could be false. Could be true. I don't know. If they gave me some money. Maybe I'd know. <laughs> I'll continue about your brother denying you of Pokemon. Yeah, he never let me fucking play, and now I feel like I can't really get into those Pokemon games, even All right. older ones. It's well, hard for me to get into now. No, I agree. I I also don't really can't get into Pokemon anymore. Like, I don't know. I just... It's, like, too much. I'm too old. And it's like, I want to play. Like, you, you can bust you my ass. You when you're young. I have that... You got me Let's Go Pikachu. Yeah, I have an open And I want to play that. In a year when I got it for you last Christmas. I'm pretty sure it's opened. I collected my, my Nintendo points because oh, that's free God. money. Yeah, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, I spent, like, 50 bucks so you could get 10 points. It's there. One day I'll say hello to pikachu and it'll be a better game just kidding yep um yeah i I don't know i I just haven't like this i don't know i feel indifferent about this game like it to me it's like i i think i've talked about like i just i think it looks all right but i feel like it was kind of not produced very well in my opinion like and especially with this dlc it seems like they really like rushed the product out initially and now are really able to be more creative and put cooler stuff into the game. So, like, I feel like this DLC also makes me rub the wrong way a little bit. Because it's kind of like, why wasn't the game just like this from the get-go? Bunny. Like, there, are, there aren't really... Bunny. 
there aren't really a lot of expansions for games that actually make them better. Like, usually the expansions are just more of the same. These are expansions that literally are, like, better things for the game. Like, that's kind of weird. Money. That's... Real quick to finish our Pokemon news, they are remaking the Mystery Dungeon games for the that is. for the Switch. It looks really nice here. Look at this trailer. Look at the art style. Google Fi, a phone like plan a, a by Winnie. Google. A if Winnie a winter traveler made a phone plan, uh, he could share all oh of this. Oh my God! This is playing on the podcast. Yikes! Is it? Yeah, you could see the audio here. I fucked up. Well, fuck. Google isn't paying us, so take that audio out so we. Don't have to give them free advertising. I'm sorry you guys had to hear that. I don't know how to unedit that, so it's probably going to just stay in there. I thought I played another video, too. I, oh, God. I should have looked here. Oh, wasn't it the Charlie XEX song? Can I, you even hear I think talking? I muted that. See, look, it looks oh, that's cool. cute. You play as, like, a Pokemon. Like, it's not really battle-y. You go on, like, missions as Pokemon. I, I think there's a little bit more. We'll show. But, yeah, you, like go around and like your pokemon and a poke like th see they all have, like you know it's like a little story that's cute yeah and you get that to, looks more interesting than the you get to pick pokemon game i like the art thing. style too it, it's yeah, like it's hand drawn it's very aesthetic there's nine tails there's zapdos i also you recognize all yeah, these I was pokemon gonna say, I really, I... except charizard x and ground on but yeah like, but that yeah. looks cool and look, Tyranitar, like too many Pokemon I like that. Now. I can't there really up. are. I agree. I really can't keep up. I'm too fucking old. Yeah, ain't that the truth? We all get old. Speaking of things getting old, PlayStation will not be at E3 2020, Sony says. Twice in a row it says. I don't remember they weren't there last year. I didn't E3, remember. here's their statement. E3 is a signature event celebrating the video game industry and showcasing the people. Brands and innovations redefining entertainment loved by billions of people around the world. E3 2020 will be an exciting, high-energy show featuring new experiences, partners, exhibits, exhibitor spaces, act activations, and programming that will entertain new and veteran attendees alike. Exhibitor interest in our new attractions is gaining the attention of brands that view E3 as the key opportunity to connect with video game fans worldwide. That's actually from the ESA, the people who make E3, not Sony themselves. Um, oh, here is this. Let me see. Uh, That's but Sony in a, will not... in a okay. statement, yeah, it is. Oh, this one's from Sony? Yeah, it says in a statement, IGN, Sony said. Okay. So Sony said, after thorough evaluation, SIE has decided not to participate in E3 2020. We have a great respect for the ESA as an organization, but we do not feel the vision of E3 2020 is the right venue for what we are focused on this year. We will build upon our global events strategy in 2020 by participating in hundreds of consumer events across the globe, maybe PAX. Our focus is on making sure fans feel part of PlayStation family, have access to play their favorite content. We have a fantastic lineup of titles coming up to the PlayStation 4 and the upcoming launch of the PS5. We're truly looking forward to a year's celebration with our fans. That's a nice way of saying fuck you. Yeah, I was going to say. Also, I feel like Sony's just kind of saying like, yeah, fuck you. We don't need you so or e3 we'll just do our own thing and we'll be popular anyway because we're playstation you know like i feel like everyone's getting a hype over the playstation 5 and they don't really need e3 for that yeah i think that's kind of what they're saying in a nice way they're like we don't need you we're good but like you know but i will like e3 is great and like i hate to say it i don't know if the article said it but like it seems like with Sony not being there, like, it really could mean, like, E3 is going to be something completely different, you know? Also, I would like this. E3 is also convenient, like, for the, as a consumer, like, E3 is so convenient. You don't, because they're saying they're going to all these, what's it say, uh... A fan events? Lineup. Global events? Yeah, global events. Like... With E3, it's, like, all in one. Like, you can just type in E3 announcements and, like, look it up. But for that, you gotta go and be like, okay, what's Sony announcing at this one? And, the, you know. And I feel like they had a really, like, skipping E3 last year made more sense. Because they were, Microsoft, Sony, they were in this weird, like, you know, they're in their last, like, wave of these launches before these new consoles so, like, a lot of people were like, oh, it makes sense that Sony's not here. They're going to wait and show more stuff next year. 
But for them to already be like, yeah, we're actually just not going again. It's like, bro, you could have showed off like all these great exclusive games for the PS5 and stuff like that. True. But yeah, I guess they're going to have their own events. I mean, they kind of do what Nintendo does. Like they have their own like streaming uh, events. I think they're called State of Play or I forget what they're called. But that's probably how they'll announce the, Ether, or they'll announce the PS5. And they'll probably have one close to E3 announcing like games or something like that. So... Yeah, I mean, it's just sad. E3 is not going to be what it used to be. It's it's kind of just slowly dying every year, and it's sad. Uh, and then to wrap up our news segment here, we have a couple of delays around the gaming uh, universe. Uh, first off, Final Fantasy VII Remake gets delayed by a month. It's coming out on April 10th. It was originally on March 3rd. Uh, I guess that gives you more time to catch up on your uh, Cloud Strife knowledge. I don't know. I have nothing. It gives you more time to play Animal Crossing when it comes out in March. Yep. <laughs> and then not play this because you're too busy having to pay your debt back to Tom. Nook. Yeah. <laughs> March 20! I'm so hyped for Animal Crossing. I literally am thinking, I don't need to use my tax refund to buy a Switch. I really don't. <laughs> yeah, but... You say that. Yeah, but I know you won't let me play on yours because you'll be playing it. I yeah, need a Switch I'll be light. playing something. Ah, you don't want to get a Switch Lite. Yeah, but I don't know. It's a hundred less dollars. Eh, you can't dock it. Yeah, Just think how nice Animal Crossing would look on the TV downstairs. Yeah, but I played it on the fucking 3DS. So yeah, whoever fucking cares about this Final Fantasy garbage, like who cares? Let's just talk That's about a lot of Animal like Crossing. That game. Yeah, I know. It's the best one apparently. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm honestly shocked this didn't get delayed longer, like, just a month, and I think they just said it was to, like, polish it up, which makes sense. They don't probably want any sort of bugs that reviewers are gonna be like, oh, this game's kind of buggy, like, it's, Also you know, because it is, like, everyone's favorite, they don't want to fuck it up. Right. Yeah, because they're also doing this, this isn't just one game, they're gonna release more parts to this game. This is essentially part one. Are they gonna make you pay for the other parts? Yeah. Of course. So think about it this way, you remember how It came out, their new one, and they never said part one? <laughs> it's yeah. like that. This is Final Fantasy VII Remake part one, they're just not saying that. So eventually there'll be a product called Final Fantasy VII Remake part two, or whatever they call it. Yep, gotta love companies. Uh... But yeah, that game still looks good, and uh, you know, I don't mind a delay, but uh, oh boy, we hit delay season quick. Another game from Square Enix that got delayed is Marvel's Avengers. That has been delayed all the way to September. It's originally going to be released, I believe, in May. Yeah, May 15th. So this is literally like, it's the uncanny valley where they all don't look the same, but yeah. they kind of do. Uh, but it's like, uh, you, you get to play as each of the Avengers, and they're going to continue to support this game, uh... I'm just explaining it to you because I don't know if they ever talked about no, it. No, I don't really know. It kind of doesn't honestly look that interesting to me. Like, it looks semi-interesting, but I don't know. It, I mean, I think they also said the same kind of stuff. Like, you know, they want to make sure the game is fully polished and looks really good. It's September 4th, 2020 is when it's coming out now. I think the, the biggest delay, though, that happened literally today as well... Is Cyberpunk 2077 release date delayed to September? Uh, the developer also needs more time to polish it. They're all getting the same thing. They all had this crunch, and yet they all got to pull back and be like, no, 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 we got to make it look nice. We got to make sure there's no bugs. I don't know if there'll be enough to save these games. I'm sure it will. Uh, this game coming out, uh, I believe, two weeks after Avengers, September 17th, 2020. All these games also had, like, a statement from their developers and teams on Twitter, if you want to go read them. Uh, all these stories were pulled up on IGN. I forgot to mention that. Uh, the Cyberpunk one does bum me yeah, out, but... Yeah, that one looks... That game looks I, really I can cool. wait. It's okay. Like, I don't really mind game delays. They never really bug me. I, I got plenty of shit to I, play. I feel like if there was a game I was really looking forward to, I'd rather have it be delayed and be better than, like, rushed and be like, shit... I mean, technically, Animal Crossing was delayed. That was supposed to come out in 2019. Oh, I don't really... I didn't know. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. They never had a date. They just said 2019. Then, like, a few months ago. Well, again, I'd rather wait. Uh, But, yeah, that's kind of, like, all the news for the week. Just some delays. Uh, then the Nintendo stuff. Nothing else really interesting happened. Let's talk about our weeks. You want to talk about some stuff you've been watching, playing... 
you, you've been reading a lot i know you're a big reader no, no. <laughs> uh well i don't know what have i we've been watching zumbo's just desserts yes on netflix um super good yeah that show's good i aspire to be as extra as zumbo <laughs> and his desserts like i watch it and i'm just like i want to make that and i'm like there's no fucking way i can make that i'm not some australian zaddy with a gene wild is it gene wilder gene wilder tattoo <laughs> fucking willy wonka uh what else what about that cat thing you watched <gasps> oh my god i forgot about that <laughs> how did i forget i watched it don't fuck with cats and it's sad because it's obviously like the cats like he kills the cats and it was really sad to watch and i was like crying well not like crying i was like tearing up so if i watched it like, I would have cried, but I, like, covered the screen and, like, was reading the subtitles. And I muted it, too, because they show the parts, like, where the guy kills the cat. Like, they don't show it, but they, like, show up to it. And it's just really sad knowing that that's, like, what's happening. But it's about this, like, dude who, like, posted a video on the internet, on Facebook, of him, like, killing two kittens. Oh, my God, it's so sad just thinking about it again. But this motherfucker was so crazy, and I don't really want to spoil the, like, I mean, you could just look it up. It's, like, a, a known, like, story. But they pretty much, like, made this Facebook group and tried tracking down this dude. Like, they took, like, frame by frame of these videos and, like, tried to find, like, items in his room. Like, where is this motherfucker? And they find out where he is and who he is. And it's just this, like, goose chase, and oh my god, it's so ridiculous. Like, this dude is fucking crazy. But it's a, actually a really good documentary. It is sad, but I think it's worth a watch. Um, you it, Again, it does show at one point. It's really sad. I had to look away. It came kind of out of nowhere. But it shows, like, the two dead kittens. Like, oh my gosh, it's so sad. I'm thinking about it again. But you can just look away or, like, mute it or something. But it, it's worth a watch, I think. It's a, a pretty good documentary. It shows, like, how crazy this dude is. Like, it's... I can't believe people are actually like this in the world. Like, how can you hurt a poor little innocent animal? Like, especially a kitten. Like, I feel like a kitten is just, like, the epitome of, like, pure, un, like, untainted, like, a, just a soul that's just so pure. Like, I love kittens. Like, people are terrible humans. Like, oh, sorry, did you want the water? No, you can have okay. some. I mean, I did, but. Yeah, I also. Yeah, it's sad. It's really sad from what you're telling me. Yeah. And also but seems it's really kind of, interesting. It's kind of funny, like, some of the shit this dude does. Like, I was telling my coworkers about it. And, like, I was laughing as I was telling them because just, like, talking out loud and saying what he was doing, which is so fucking ridiculous. Like, this dude is just he he's just oh my gosh i don't really want to say anything because i don't want to spoil it but watch it's only it, three, episodes. It's three episodes they're like an hour hours, each yeah it's not too bad it's not i almost watched it all in one night if i didn't like start watching it at like 1 a.m but yeah um i don't know really what you talked about last week on your podcast but we did watch like the joker I, I didn't know, watch. Dude. I didn't talk about that. Oh, okay. So we watched like the Joker. We did. That was really good. It was very good. I liked it a lot. Um, what else did we watch? Life after Beth. Yeah, that one. Yeah, has like Aubrey Plaza, and his name's Dane DeHaan, and it's like this guy whose like girlfriend dies, and then like she he like hangs out with her dad. And then she, like, mysteriously comes back to life. That's not a spoiler, spoiler that happens in, like, 20 minutes in. And yeah. it's, like, in the description of the movie, so I don't really count that as a spoiler. If it's in the description of the movie. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm looking at her thing. Holes. We watched Holes. <laughs> Fucking great movie. <laughs> Corey never saw, and I'm like, I want to watch Holes. That's pretty good. And it was in, on Disney Plus forever. And then one day, I'm like, every time we went on Disney Plus, I was like, let's watch Holes. No, coming in august 2021 yeah and then we're like Corey's like it's not even on he clicked it and it was on disney plus i'm like we're watching it and i fucking love that movie like it's such a good movie i don't care what anyone says it's a good movie also well uh, oh go ahead 
The night we watched Joker, I also watched the movie Her, also with Joaquin Phoenix. And I watched it before when I was, like, in high school, but I watched it again, and I, I liked it a little more now that I'm older, I guess. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, he is. The movie's kind of sad, because I feel like it's just, like, showing you, like, you're losing... Like, it's just, like, the connection with technology. Like, you're so... Like, this motherfucker literally falls in love with his fucking phone, with a fucking AI, or an OS, an operating, yeah, an operating system, and I'm just like, I mean, I guess technically she's an AI, too, because she learns, but, yeah, this motherfucker is in love with a phone, and I feel like if that doesn't show our fucking generation, what does? Yeah, I believe that. There's, like, that popular, uh, video about that guy who's, like, in love with his car. Yeah, you know. he, like, fucks his car somehow. I feel like Siri, like, if it was real and it was, like, Siri, I would be like, that makes a little more sense, because at least you can talk to that person. Like, how do you communicate with a car? It's not like the yeah. car is talking back to True. you. Yeah, I feel like... You could like, be raping that car for all we know. Yeah, but, like, with the, the phone, like, it's, like, weird because you watch it and you, like, you can see how we, like, you get the get the connection they have because it's like just like talking to a person on the phone but it's just his phone and she like learns and she like you know grows as an ai but she's still like an ai and it's like a weird line like this might be in the future like where do we draw the line like somebody could fall in love with their phone and the programming in the phone like it's just like this could happen in the future all i'm hearing is this is a black mirror Yes! Yes! I was thinking that. I'm like, this is like a two-hour episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> I'd probably like that movie then. The only reason I watched that is because I had to go to sleep. Trust me, it's not that I don't want to watch that movie, but... Yeah, it's a long movie. I want to watch Titanic with you, too. Oh, I also watched another movie um, with Ellen Page. It's called... I think it's called My Days of Mercy... And it's, like, Ellen Page's dad is, like, on the deathbed, or deathbed, not deathbed, he's on death row. And her and her sister and her little brother go across country in these few states and, like, protest the death penalty. And then she ends up meeting this girl who's, like, for the death penalty. And then they kind of, like, have a relationship. And it's, like, kind of just the movie is about, like them and their relationship and stuff it's a pretty good movie i don't really know what else i was watching like that i had on in the background nothing specific i don't think do you play any video games no but i'm playing that game on snapchat it's pretty much like overcooked it's called ready chef go it's called ready chef go and it's so fun like I don't know, it's so addicting. That's like the closest thing I'm fucking playing a mobile She's game. She's the number one in Snapchat. I'm 1%, top 1% of Snapchat. Don't matter. Yeah, fight me. But it's so addicting, and it's so easy, and there's no microtransactions. Like, and I, of course I play 8-Ball Pool. Like, I've literally just become a fucking mobile gamer. Like, I don't, oh, wait, we played Man of Medan. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, we played that. That we was good. We also played and completed Life is Strange <gasps> too. Yes! Oh my god, it's been so long. I keep forgetting about these games. I like that one a lot. Obviously, Life is Strange is, like, my favorite game. But. Man, my Dan was pretty good. I enjoyed. I mean, it was, it's kind of just Until Dawn. Like, the same kind of, like, gameplay premise. But it's instead, like, just a whole new theme with whole new characters. But it was a really neat, like... I don't know, like, six to eight hour game. A little, like, bite size, like, horror game. A lot of jump scares. It was it was creepy, but I'd say most of its horror was from jump scares. Um, and, of course, I, I fucked up and got people killed, because yeah. that's what I do in those games. It was cool. I, I enjoyed watching that. I thought it seemed like a pretty good game. Yeah, and it was, like, weird the way it went, because you're, you're just expecting, like... I don't want to spoil that either. But, you know, you kind of have your expectations of this game. Like, they go, and then there's this, like, abandoned boat, and it's, like, creepy, and, like, it's just not what you expect. I think it, I, I have high hopes for 
Yeah, so the rest the of their games, one. the dark picture games. I liked what they did with the uh, I forget the name of the guy who will like will talk to you in between, but that was cool. Almost like a Twilight Zone type thing where he would like talk about your actions. Remember that old yeah. guy? I don't remember. Yeah, his I like name. that. I don't either. It was cool. I mean, they kind of did that in Until Dawn too. Yeah, they did. The curator. That one was more like interactive though, in Until Dawn. Yeah. It asked you like, "What are you scared of?" It was like a therapist in Until Dawn. But in this one, it was kind of just like he still a talks to teller. you. I thought. Yeah, he does. But like in Man of Medan, you didn't really interact with him. He just kind of told you. Like, maybe, maybe they'll add that later. Yeah, I mean that wasn't a make or break for me. That was just an observation. What did you think of the ending of Life is Strange too? Um. Well, I got one that I didn't hate. You know. We're going to talk about spoilers. Okay, so just, we're going to spoil it? Yeah, just if you don't want to get spoiled on Life is Strange 2, uh, stop listening. Okay, so I like the last episode because you go to that camp with your mom. Right. And fucking David is there from the first Life is Strange, Chloe's stepdad. And I didn't even notice. And he was talking. And Corey's like, wait, that sounds like him. And I'm like, fuck, his name's David. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is David. <laughs> and then you get to explore his little RV. And you see a picture of, like, Max and Chloe. And you can, like, ask him. And then there's, like, a letter from Victoria, too, from Arcadia Bay. And I picked, um, destroy the Arcadia Bay. So, like, Max and Chloe are still alive. And David and Victoria actually survived, too, because during the time of the, uh, tornado in the first game they were like in the bunk <clears throat> sorry i just forgot how to talk for a second they were in the bunker like david was saving victoria from the in the bunker so they survived and then max and chloe also survived because they pieced the fuck out of there and you can like ask him about that stuff and it's like a really cool callback and then when you leave like his phone rings and you can like eavesdrop outside of his thing and it's just like really cool um closure yeah closure and they give you like just enough but they don't shove it in your face because yeah. it was a different game but they're still giving that little bit of like just little tidbits to the fans of the first game because they know everyone loves max and chloe like there's no beating them like they're great and they just gave that to you a little bit without making you come out of what life is strange 2 was i guess I guess if you uh, pick the actual location, not Chloe, yeah, the stuff in there is about like his breakup with Joyce or whatever that oh, really? woman. Yeah. Why? Because like Chloe would technically be dead, and it yeah. would like tear him apart. Yeah, because he has to get there. The game. He's not in the game. If you pick, you know the. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just in that final episode like he's not gonna disappear if you yeah but he won't he he would have like moved because of joyce right? yeah okay yeah but chloe would have been dead in that time yeah because they would she yeah they made it oh yeah because they made it so but wait now i'm confused because if she didn't pick chloe she would have went back in time and chloe would have died well, oh, yeah, and then it. they still would have yeah. broke up yeah, somehow. Okay, I get it now. So he would have got there. time shit confuses yeah. me. I got it. Okay, I got it. Because then they would have been together. I don't even think he would have had anything of Max. Maybe a picture of her from the first game. I don't no, know. No, because they wouldn't have been friends. Yeah. Because Chloe so, would have died in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we got to Mexico and everything. And, like, oh, I just splashed water. It didn't <laughs> get in your keyboard, though. Um, Thank God. We got to Mexico and then i was like daniel there's a wall the yeah oh yeah yeah there was a wall and I, i'm like destroy it and then these motherfucker vigilantes racist ass vigilantes came out of nowhere and like shot daniel literally they were going back to mexico and the vigilantes are like they thought they were coming in and they're like you guys are coming in our country or whatever and like being like, no, racist we're going to mexico yeah they want to go like, back why would you want to go to mexico Ooh. and then they get like caught by border patrol and then they break out of the prison and like cause a whole ruckus and everyone's like yo what the fuck are they doing we got to stop them and they and we steal a car me and daniel like sean and daniel and then we get to the border and there's like all these cops 
and they're, like, talking, and they're having a heartfelt moment, like, Daniel and Sean, like, Sean is apologizing to Daniel for, like, all the shit that he did, and then he's, like, we gotta go, and he's, like, push the cars out of the way, so he pushed, like, I picked to push the cars out of the way, because I'm, like, we're almost there, I'm just thinking to myself, like, we're almost there, just push the cars, but Daniel pushed the cars and then jumped out of the car, so Sean went to Mexico, and Daniel stayed in the U.S., and I was like, fuck, that's not what I wanted. I wanted them together. Yeah, the the two choices are either surrender or yeah, go. Yeah, go, yeah. So I went. And, yeah, and then I, it just depends on how you, like, treat Daniel throughout the... Because the, there were options where you surrender. I don't know. You probably get arrested as Sean. Yeah, you Daniel's do. too young. And there's another one where you go and Daniel comes with you. There's one that Daniel refuses Like, just, there's a bunch of different things, but he, I pretty much, like, Sean went to Mexico, and then it it went to Daniel, like, growing up, he was, like, 16, and it was, like, a time skip, and he was, like, 16, and he was, like, friends with Chris, the kid next, oh, he, he went to his grandparents, and he was friends with Chris, the kid next door, that was, like, Captain Spirit, and then they had, like, letters, I guess, that like, Sean and Daniel wrote to each other, and Sean ended up, like, in my playthrough with Cassie. Is it Cassie or Cassidy? I th- was it her? I thought it was that girl he was talking to when he was in high school. It was Cassidy? Yeah, it was. Oh, well, then it's Cassidy. Yeah. Cassidy's the girl he slept with. Yeah. That was, um, they were together in Mexico, so I guess she went to Mexico with him, or for him. And she, for some reason, Daniel was under house arrest. He had, like, a little bracelet on his ankle. I think it's probably Because he was kind of charged for, yeah. yeah, that stuff then. And he was too young, so they probably didn't put him in Yeah, the government jail. knows about his powers, so they probably just keep him inside. I don't know. If, yeah. Well, they were there when he moved the cars, so they know. But, yeah. So, I didn't, like, hate my ending. I just wish they could have been together. But I guess it was technically a good ending. Like, no one really got... I mean, Daniel's technically house arrested, but... I don't know. I I liked it a lot. It was kind of just sudden. Like, it was really sudden. I was like, like whoa, time skip. And there's like an epilogue. Yeah. I actually was listening to a podcast where these people interviewed the developers and they did talk about the other endings if you want to know about them. Yeah, I do. So if you surrender, uh, Sean goes to jail for like 15 years. Oh, fuck. So you're essentially trading like Sean it's like being happy. it's like yeah and like whose freedom is what because then like daniel he just lives a normal life like i think he goes to the grandparents but he can just be a kid but yeah sean is in jail for 15 years so he loses like they s- explained it as like the best time or the best years of his yeah. life because it's like when he's, he's like from 18 to like, like 30 something yeah. yeah and i think there's like a part where it shows him like coming out and he's almost like his mom like just driving around like kind of aimlessly like he gets out and he's like well i don't know what to do at this point um and then i think there is one ending which is probably the best ending which is like they are both in mexico and they're like at a sweatshop or something like they're working on like cars or something i think but they kind of explain like there isn't really necessarily supposed to be like a good ending there's supposed to be consequences to because they said that's kind of how reality is like they explained like they it's not really good endings well the one i had was kind of all right like daniel He's under house arrest, but for how long? Is it forever? It didn't seem like he was saving his life. Yeah, it didn't seem like he was, like... I think he had a girlfriend, didn't he? Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't know, but he he's was... He's, like, a teenager. Yeah. So he was, like, 16, and if, even if he's there, like, as bad as it sounds, even if he's under arrest for, like, 10 he years, he'd be, Christopher. like, 20 by the time he gets out. And he still has, like, his whole life. And it's kind of, like, house arrest versus being in jail. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it kind of is like it kind of balances. The worst one would be probably Sean going to jail and just being like Yeah. But then Daniel lives a good life. It's like what do you, you know, what do you get? Your right consequences. Yeah. Uh they also talked about how they like they prefer making uh characters for their stories rather than stories for their existing characters. So, like, a lot of people ask them, like, oh, why didn't you make another one with Max and Chloe and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it was, like, their argument. Like, 
when they make life is strange three it'll be something different like it's not gonna be yeah isn't about, it the like, one about like the trans kid that's not life is strange that's uh, a, new like a new it's game it's like remember me or who am i or something like that yeah uh but yeah that's it was a good game it, Pe- okay. it shaped up really well I, loved... I think it ended strong i love the first game obviously life is strange is fucking i think that great. one's better that is it's like the best but why can't you just enjoy stuff for how it is like why do you got to pick apart literally everything so you're like unhappy with the game when you can just take it for something different it doesn't have to be the exact same you know yeah they can too picky they can do different things yeah and i i mean the one guy kind of explained this where he said like maybe the two brothers aren't as marketable as two like lesbian you know true girls and i kind of get that but i do it's like two cute girls i do really respect what life is strange 2 is and especially with how the developers they essentially describe this game as more of like it's kind of about surviving and yeah, almost it, being alone like it's daniel and sean like yeah, mostly on I mean, their own there's like a lot of the wolf imagery yeah it's like a lone wolf you yeah. know like all that and also i like the i don't know people probably don't like this but fuck them i like it like the political stuff in it like oh yeah me mexican. too mexican everyone's like racist like that one part where they literally for sean to sing in yeah. spanish that was like so humiliating and he was crying and i'm like these and then there's people like the fucking border patrol people that are like get out of our country yeah like, oh my god i hate people like that mm-hmm. this is so blindly racist like ugh. yeah i like that about the game though even though it made me sad it was like damn you guys are hitting the nail on the head though apparently they also talked to a lot of, like homeless people when they made that game like oh, they, yeah they did like a trip they said on the west coast and talked to like yeah homeless people and i guess like that you know like in episode three where they're at that like weed farm that's like illegal and they're kind of yeah. like in a camp well i guess that's like a real thing like there are things oh, yeah? like that like illegal not even though it's legalized in california now yeah. but there are illegal ones well they probably make more money it's just, than the yeah it's, ones. it's just people who kind of just do their own thing and just go from town to town like you know that's kind of like what that was but yeah i like that game a lot like it was a really good game i feel like it didn't get as much buzz as the original life is strange and i think it ended very well and i think it was really cool just like how we get to kind of experience it together even though like it's a single player game how we get to sit down and like it's kind of weird because when i played life is strange one it was the complete opposite you watched me play through it even though you played through it like you got every ending and stuff Mm -hmm. like that but we literally like flip-flopped with life is strange too you played it all and i watched it with you and i think that's pretty cool that you can do that kind of stuff with games like it's neat well when i played life is strange one um i'm pretty sure i played it with rachel and we had to skype for the last episode oh we skyped and i like screen shared and i was like because I was so hyped for the last episode. Right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, last episode. That was fun. I forgot that game came out last year, too. Like, Life is Strange 1. Yeah. Well, it came like, well, out it was like December. 2014 to 15, right? Oh, for the, you said last year. Oh, I meant last decade. It came out in 2014? Yeah, to 15, right? Because Cause it was episodic. Because I remember... I was talking about Life is Strange on our first date, yeah. and that was in 2015. Because I think you played the last episode when we started dating. No, I was, I was waiting for episode four to come out, because oh, okay. I remember telling you, you are a dick, I just gotta say, because I talked about it so much on our first date, and then a couple days later, I messaged you, and I'm like, oh, then, like, they announced a new episode of Life is Strange, and you're like, what's that? And I'm like, <laughs> wow, thanks. I'm a dick? Yeah, you didn't remember. I'm not just an idiot? Yeah. I'm a dick? Yep. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> wow. You got anything else you want to talk about? No, not really. I don't really do Let's much. Let's talk about Holes. What about Cause Holes? Because you just mentioned Joker and Holes and are like, yeah, those are good movies. But like, don't you want to go in depth and talk about like the movies? I, I've never seen Holes for the first time. I didn't know what to expect. It was a wild ride. Oh, I 
I don't know who's gonna find this now, but we're done with the Life is Strange 2 spoilers. I should have said, like, oh, we'll yeah. talk about this for five minutes or something. I fucked up there, but... Yeah, Holes, like, I was just... I don't know, I didn't know anything about it other than Shia LaBeouf's fucking in it, and he was, like, a baby. Um... And there, I didn't, like, I remember watching it when I was younger, but I didn't remember there was, like, eight different stories in it, like... Well, it's, like, four, it's, yeah. you know... But, yeah, it's, like, super complicated, all the different jumps... I mean, you can tell it's, like, a movie from, like, the early 2000s, but it's it's not bad. It is a kid's movie, though. Like, it's definitely not a rich plot or, like, I don't know, it never gets too serious. Like, I, I'm kind of like, yeah, this is a Disney movie or Disney Channel movie, but, you know, it's pretty good for, for what it was. I liked it a lot. Like, I think it had a good cast. I liked the, all the upper, like, the adults at the... I didn't know the, that was Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that was a it was a good guess. It I was. liked him. I liked his dad, like his, that Larry looking or uh Fuck, what's his name? Fuck. Henry Harry Winkler. Yeah. H- Henry Winkler? I think it's Henry Winkler. Yeah, but Winkler. not Larry. Who's the impractical joker guy who says Larry? Joe. Yeah, Joe. Wow. He <laughs> does look like Joe. Yeah, Fuck, no. he does. I said that when Larry. we watched it. Did you? I don't remember. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's a pretty good movie, I guess. Yeah. And then with the Joker, it's like, I didn't know what to expect of that either. All I heard was, like, people like, oh, it's so good, blah, 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 blah. This is going to make people shoot up schools or something like that. I'm like, what? Then we watched it, and it's just about a dude, like, you know, breaking down on a bunch of steps, busting a move. <laughs> and then we looked up that staircase, yeah, and there's, like, a, a million fucking people there every day, just like Those poor Joker. people that live in those apartments. <laughs> Um, I thought it was really cool how they integrated, like, the, you know, DC universe elements of it with Batman. It's yeah. very subtle, but it is there. Um, of course, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, he did an amazing job. Honestly, thinking about it now, he might have been the best Joker. I feel like he did do better than Heath Ledger, because he really, like, embodied the character, and the movie is just about the Joker, whereas, like, the Dark Knight, you do go in between so you don't get as much time with Heath Ledger as Joker but yeah yeah it was a really good movie it had a lot of really cool shots I think it was a really good story um I don't think it was too long and it also just had a really good cast I don't know I I, I really liked it what are you doing (laughs) (laughs) it was one of my hairs thank you (laughs) uh and that's it you don't got anything else you want to talk about I don't really think I watched anything or really did anything. Well, look, we got this list in front of me, and I see some things that we can still talk about. So, I know it's, like, fucking old news at this point now, but you want to talk about The Rise of Skywalker? Sure. All right, so for the next... This isn't going to take long. For the next two minutes, we're going to talk about Rise of Skywalker. Maybe five. Two to five minutes. I know it's a big window, but bear with us. All right, start. Um, yeah, that kiss was unnecessary, I think. Like, Kylo Ren and Rey, like, I didn't think the kiss fit in. It was a little weird. I know. That's, like, my biggest takeaway from that movie. (laughs) I enjoyed it. I feel like people, you know, a lot of people probably won't like it because a lot of people are, like, purists of Star Wars and whatever you do you. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie. I really liked the scene with Kylo Ren and Rey in the water planet and they were like sword fighting sword fighting oh my god (laughs) oh Oh, i hate everything about myself um yeah that was really cool um i wish she was there sorry i'm yawning no it's okay (laughs) she was there and there was like the evil ray for like a minute that was really cool too it wasn't even that long. It was like a second. <laughs> yeah, it was. That was cool, though. Oh, I also thought it was weird how they kind of just, like, had Palpatine. Like, yo, I'm back, and I got a granddaughter. <laughs> Who fucked Palpatine? I want to know. Where's that lore? Remember in The Last Jedi where it's like, your parents were nobody. Who cares about them? And then in The Rise of Skywalker, like, your parents were Palpatines. Yeah. Remember in The Rise of Skywalker, or in The Last Jedi, when it's like, who cares who Snoke was? And in The Rise of Skywalker, it's like, no! It was the pal- Emperor all along. He made Snoke. Yeah, That's The Rise of Skywalker. 
It's JJ, and he took everything about the last Sky or the last Jedi, and he's like, "All right, let me fix this." Yeah. And I don't even know if it's fixing it. It's just he gave purpose to it. I enjoyed the movie, though. I really did enjoy it. I do think Palpatine was unnecessary, but they killed off Snoke, so they couldn't really have made another villain. I guess would really work, like a yeah, big, can't just have, a like, big a villain. villain yeah, like, like they couldn't just make a new Snoke, like Snoke like, Two, like, they, Ultra Snoke. Like where'd he come from then? You know, if they did that. I I think the movie was uh, really well like formed. Like I liked all the different bits in between, and I, I think all the characters had good moments. They did. C-3PO killed it. He's really funny. Yes, like, in did. the first, like, 15, 20 minutes, like, I was chuckling hard at his, like, little uh, sarcastic comments. <laughs> I know. I love C-3PO. Um, and then he was evil. That was cool. No, that didn't happen. He was evil for, like, a second. Uh, Shout-outs to Babu Frick or whatever that little guy is. He's great. Is that his name? Yeah. Babu Frick. He's like, eh! Like Shout-out the... Point two seconds that the porgs were back on the screen like yes i was living for that point two seconds that was a cool part i liked when she goes there and she's just gonna live there and then it's uh goes to luke and he's like what are you doing i like the part with um han solo and kylo oh Ren, yeah and he's like dad and then Ky- or han solo is like i know and i'm like <laughs> yes I don't know. I don't know how long we've been talking, so I'm gonna wrap this up here and I think say it was three minutes. Um, the ending was pretty cool too. I like the whole bit where yeah, she goes cool. back to Tatooine, buries Luke and Leia's lightsaber. Oh, Leia has a lightsaber. That was cool too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she has her cool yellow piss uh, staff lightsaber. It's built out of her staff, and like the whole bit where she see- finally sees the ghosts or whatever they're called and she's like oh i'm ray ray skywalker yeah. like it's a good ending and it's got the you know i liked it i enjoyed it a lot of people didn't like it it's hard to end things and you know it's hard to please people i guess Especially nowadays but i thought it was fun star wars yeah yeah and they're gonna make more movies so whatever i get that this is the end of like the skywalker trilogy but it's or whatever but i i liked it i enjoyed it did you have something else you were gonna talk about no uh-huh think so okay uh real quick oh you showed me that picture i finished off the mandalorian oh yeah that was a good show it ended really cool i'm not gonna spoil it of course because it's still pretty new but it was a good show and i'm excited to see what happens in the next season because they're gonna make more seasons because they gotta sell more baby yoda toys and yes. make more baby yoda memes I build a bear. <laughs> um how long are we going an hour 18 all right um uh, how much do i want to get into this star wars jedi fallen order i've not talked about this at all on my podcast how much did you hate me when i played that game i mean i would wake <laughs> up on the wonderful time that we had off and you had off for christmas and i'd wake up and want to cuddle my boyfriend and then this motherfucker is just click clacking away at his keyboard and i'm like okay i guess i'll go back to sleep then i go to work and then this motherfucker i come home and he's still playing it <laughs> first of all i wasn't click clacking and i played on the ps4 not on a keyboard okay okay get get my oh, gaming yeah, peripherals right yeah so it'd be click clacking on the sticks like yeah sorry or whatever stick oh, yeah, noises that, sound that, like. That's what a controller clack, sounds clack. like. Clack, clack. Whatever. That's a controller. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Oh shit, I almost <laughs> fell. My chair is missing a wheel oh, and shit, I almost fell. Red. That's fine. That's like you too loud. At, it's, shut up. That was funny as it's shit. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm getting tired. Can you tell? Um, but yes, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I literally played that game and beat it within four days. I got it on my birthday, so it was after Christmas. It was probably like the 28th or 29th, and I just kept playing it over and over and over. And it was so good. It's a really good game. It's probably one of my favorite games uh 2019. I, I, you know, I'm a big Star Wars nerd, so of course I loved the whole world, and the, the story was pretty interesting. I mean, it's all like technically canon, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the gameplay was a lot of fun. It's kind of like a, a Dark Souls type of game like a lot of like parrying and dodging and you know you got to be careful because your guy can only take a few hits 
Uh, shout outs to the coolest dude on the podcast who beat it on Jedi Grandmaster. That's the hardest difficulty. Yes, that isn't uh, a lightsaber in my pants. That's oh my, my dick. It's huge. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I will say, though, I thought I was playing on the hardest difficulty because I wanted to get more trophies, and there's no trophies for difficulties, so I kind of shot myself in the foot for doing that. But at the same time, that game actually wasn't too hard to me. Uh, and again, I don't want to, like, humble brag about that because it is a challenging game. But considering I've played, like, you know, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, all those type of games, like, I'm used to this, you know, take your time, you only have a limited amount of dodges, and you can only take a limited amount of hits... So I kind of knew what I was getting into playing it. But I think the the whole game structure is really good going to planet to planet. And as you get these different force powers, you progress. You can keep progressing further and further in different parts of the planets. And you find uh, different pieces of stuff to change your lightsaber, different pieces of clothing, skins for your uh, little robot BD-1 and your ship. Um, and that stuff's cool, but I, it's not as rewarding as finding, like, maybe a, a new weapon or something that actually has stat benefits, because it's all just cosmetic stuff. It actually doesn't, like, be like, oh, you got this new hilt for your lightsaber, it's stronger, or something like that. It's all just cosmetic stuff. But it's neat, like, actually being able to create your lightsaber. I thought that was pretty cool. And later on, you eventually get different kyber crystals, and you can actually change the color, so that's even cooler. Um... It had good bosses and good characters. I think all the actors did really well. The guy who plays the main character, I'm blanking on his name, but he's uh, the one guy in Gotham who plays the Joker. Uh, shout out to the Joker again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they all did a good job. Uh, it ended pretty well. I really like the game. I'm still contemplating going back to just 100% it because I really enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, that game was hella fun. Really, really good. Uh, what else do we got on here? talked about holes joker life after beth uh i mean we watched some stuff on uh disney plus that's pretty much all i've really been watching i watched uh, a classic 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 animated movie treasure planet that's a good movie don't you dare talk poorly i don't remember no if i even ever watched that i'm not gonna lie <laughs> and you hated it i said i hated it i don't know <laughs> i don't remember that <laughs> I remember watching Atlantis, which I really loved. Oh, that's a great one, is Treasure too. The Plan is Treasure Planet the one with the gay guys and the ukulele and the blowjob? What? <laughs> no, that's El Dorado. Oh, okay. That's not even Disney. I don't know. They don't, they don't look the <laughs> same. That's DreamWorks, technically. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was watching that last night, or the, a couple nights ago. I was watching Treasure Planet. Yeah, it's I the one that, that had the Goo Goo Doll soundtrack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, I'm like, this is edgy, and it was the weird animation. Yeah. And it had that, yeah. like, uh, furry prince oh, or yeah, captain girl, cat. and there was the rock guy. That's a good movie. And the cyborg. Oh, it's actually a good movie. Very underutilized. I, I liked it a lot. It's a, it's a good I grew up with the, that weird, like, it was like the 2000s Disney where they didn't know what they were doing yet. Yeah. Like Atlantis. They added some furries And then eventually they made, like, Tangled and Frozen, and they're like, yeah, this is what we do. Yeah, this makes us the most yeah. money. And they did Moana and stuff like oh, that. Oh, fuck, I love Moana. And, you know, they bought Pixar, and they're like, we'll make more they Toy Stories. Everything. Yeah, then they, then they just bought everything. Thanks. Speaking of Disney, Disney, Biz <laughs> I'm tired. Disney. I watched one day at Disney. I guess we both watched that. That was that documentary about like the people who work in Disney and the different Disney stuff, like products. Like there was the one girl who worked at like the news studio. There was like a girl who works in like the plays. There was the one guy who draws Mickey Mouse. It was really cool. It's a documentary just about Disney life or like what to expect for working for Disney and what they think about it. I'm sure there are a lot of people, though, who work for Disney who don't have kind words to say. Yeah. They probably very much uh, scripted or uh, vented their uh, people that they interviewed. Of course, one of the people they interviewed, though, was the CEO, Bob Iger. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, what what's he going to say that isn't, like, good or, you know. Uh, other than that, I didn't really watch anything else. Uh I've been watching just some, like, comedy specials recently. I want to get back into watching anime. I heard My Hero Season 4 or 3, whatever the newest one, got pretty good. 
I need to go back and finish Demon Slayer. As for games, I, well, I just talked about uh, Jedi Fallen Order. I've just been playing a lot of Smash Ultimate. I've been streaming that more. Don't really have much to say about that. Same old, same old. I have Call of Duty on here, although I haven't really played that in a little bit. The last time I played that, and I always fucking do this, I'll buy the Battle Pass for a game, and I play for a couple days with the Battle Pass, and I just drop off. I don't know why this always happens to me. They get my money, and I just don't want to go back and play it. I don't know why. I just wasted... I just gave them 10 bucks, and yeah. They don't give a fuck. They're yeah. like, you, I got your money, Yeah, bitch. I'm sure that'll happen with Apex Legends, because I started playing that again. Actually, I think the Battle Pass for that just ended, but that's fun. I hope to probably play way more of that and stream more of that. I don't really have much to say about that, because it's all the same shit, like multiplayer, first-person shooter-type games. I need to play more single-player stuff. Speaking quickly of single-player stuff, I played and finished Katana Zero during the Christmas break. This is like my games from like a month ago, because remember, I haven't done a podcast in a while. My girlfriend's leaving. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm cold. Um, but yeah, this is a like little indie platformer type game. It's kind of like a little bit like Celeste, but instead of being like a little girl, you're a grown ass man with a katana who murders people. Uh, really cool game. Good music, good visual style. Gameplay is a lot of fun. The story is very interesting. It's a, a very good indie game. Not very long, about like six eight hours if you get this on sale i would highly recommend it It was a lot of fun really really good game kind of hard but I, I still thought it was really cool and liked it a lot and then i also have started playing a little bit more of the division two again that's kind of the i guess my single player game i kind of want to get through even though it's not really single player it's kind of like a destiny loot shooter type game but I don't know, I feel indifferent about that game. I like it, but at the same time, it's also hella boring because there's not really any story to it. It's more or less just the gameplay and, like, you know, checking off the boxes, seeing what loot I get. Like, I more or less enjoy just seeing the different weapons I get after, you know, killing the enemies because there's a big pool of the different type of weapons and trying to max out my level and get through all the different content because there's some pretty cool end game content in there but i don't know it's just kind of a slog and it's like not that interesting to me because there's really like no story like i don't know you're like the division's like a group of people who are trying to like help the good people because it's essentially like there was like a apocalypse but it's not like a normal apocalypse it was like this virus that was on money that killed a lot of people but there aren't like zombies it's just people with gun. like it's all just normal people so there's essentially, like, little groups of people, like, end-of-the-world type things, like little bunkers and, like, built-together buildings, but there's still, like, guns and bullets, like, at surplus. I don't know. It's weird. It's in Washington, D.C. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have much to say about it. It's not that interesting. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Again, I don't know if I'm going to continue to play it, but... I don't know, it's something to do. I got a stack of games. I've just kind of been addicted to playing Smash, and I want to play more Apex Legends right now. It's kind of kind of my thing. And now with all these game delays, I guess I got to wait to play the good games. Except for Animal Crossing. Yeah, I know. You'll be playing it, I won't get to play. Okay, I feel like our energies are both at negative <laughs> six. I think we should end this thing. Uh, Megan, thank you for coming. Yep. Yeah. We're doing the handshake. Yep. Hear the handshake uh, on the podcast. Shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake and bake. I almost was going to buy that the other day. I, don't, I feel like my mom made that before, but I don't really remember. It's just bread. It. It's just seasoned breadcrumbs. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And yeah. then I think you just bake it. So, like, you get a piece but of you, meat. you, like, made your breadcrumb seasoned. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah, I know. I used an air fryer for the first time. It was fun. Yes. We have an egg uh, cooker and a rice cooker for Christmas. We have every type of cooking utensil except the griddle. That would be the next thing I'd like to we get. We don't have a panini press. No. A griddle would be nice, though. You can make all your breakfast on the griddle. Pancakes, eggs, bacon. Just one griddle. I was going to say. We, Griddles are cool. We don't have a waffle make maker, Make some burgers, some hot dogs. We do have a waffle maker. We have a blender. We have two blenders. We have two little crock pot or two crock pots. One big, one small. We small have, one's really we small. We have a lot of stuff. Um... But yeah, the, the podcast is over. Sorry this one was short, guys. Uh, not really much news going on, and I didn't really have too much, I guess, going on either for me. Uh, pretty much just covering what I've been doing. 
the past few weeks because January sucks. Yeah, January sucks. Oh, uh, real quick though, I mean, I know we're at the end, but we didn't even mention we were at Philly. I oh, saw yeah. Mega sixty four live. That was really great. I got to meet Rocco. That was awesome. It was a really good show. They did a live tour That's on the funny. East Coast. Uh, and we just had a good time in Philly. It was, like I mentioned way earlier in the beginning of the podcast, surprisingly warm. It was like 65. I thought it was like 70. It was close. It was pretty warm. It was kind of cold. It was windy. Yeah, but it was like a really nice day out in January on the East Coast, which never happens. Uh, but yeah, we just walked around Philly. We got good ramen in Chinatown. Yes. We walked through the Reading Terminal Market. We got free uh, alcohol samples. Yeah. I felt bad, but uh, he offered... Uh, I would have bought it, but I'm just a cheap bitch. It was like $30 yeah, for like we, we, ginger vodka. But then we paid, uh, well, I didn't pay. My girlfriend paid $16 for two drinks. Yeah, what They the had fuck? CBD oil in them, though, they were so they were much. good. We went to the Hemp Cafe. That's what it was called, right? Yeah. Hemp it, no, Cafe. Nothing illegal. All CBD. Perfectly All legal. No, there was like 0.002%. You could buy THC. Bud Flower. That was weird. But it wasn't like THC. It was like or little joints. Hemp, yeah. CBD. Yeah. It's like it if you get didn't a co- get you high. It's like if you get a kombucha and you get like minus minus one of alcohol yeah, it in it. Like, like that. you need to drink like sixteen. No, you, like sixty kombuchas to get drunk. Yeah. And before you get drunk, you would die. <laughs> yeah. You'd fucking throw up um, all over the place. And there are cool shops like when Condom Kingdom. Yeah. I like that one that was. Uh, <laughs> they had a fucking. The crane venue. game. Yes, the crane game with dildos vibrators massagers yeah. they had a lot of cool stuff it in there funny. chocolate thunder whoa you made it red chocolate thunder stop i don't care it's not gonna explode when it's red but you're gonna hurt the ears i'm gonna hurt the computer you are i like that one shop we went into that was all about like had like the incense and like yeah. all the books and stuff that was cool like self-help stuff uh, was there anything else that we really went in? We went Dave and Buster's to pee. Yeah. Oh, it was like a, it looked like a shit show in there other than Luigi's Mansion, the arcade yes. game, which looks surprisingly empty out of all the stuff yeah, in there. Yeah, that shit's cool. That's a cr- crime also, that that thing was empty. I just read the thing there and it reminded me with like my friends, they came up for New Year's. Oh yeah, that's right. played that game a little we bit. We played That's You and we also played the Jackbox Quiplash. Yes. And that was fun, we both of them. We played the board game Nick had. I don't remember it's what that was called. called. Murder or House... Fuck, I'm gonna look it up. It was like, we played it for like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. But it was cool. It was fun. Oh, Megan it was made... Like betrayal... Betrayal of the... I don't know, I'm gonna look it up. Megan made some banging mac and cheese. <gasps> Fuck, yes. It had like cheeses I'd never even heard of before. Well, we couldn't find that one. It was like Fontina cheese, so we just got Gouda. What was that one? Gruyere or something? Gruyere. I never, never heard, heard of Gruyere. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, we just had It was had delicious. It was so, so good. I ate that for about six days, and I swear my cholesterol <sighs> went up about 116%. It's I got the Anthony in the Kitchen Cookbook for Christmas. You're welcome. Yes, Corey got Thank it for you. me. And fuck, there were so many good recipes in there. And I'm like... To my friends, I'm like, yo, you motherfuckers like mac and cheese? And they're like, Yeet. yeah, we like mac and Yeet. cheese. So I'm like, I'm going to make this mac and cheese. It was called Betrayal at House on the Hill. It's a b- tabletop game with miniatures and cards. Yeah, we only played a little bit because it was, like, it was getting fun. late and my friends wanted to leave. And we only played a little bit, but it was fun. And I can't wait to play it again. We like we're definitely gonna play it again when we have more time because everyone was liking it. I think. Yeah. It was fun. We had a good time. I enjoyed my break as well. It was a nice uh, twelve days of doing nothing, just playing video games, yeah. watching stuff, sleeping, you know, eating, uh, a lot of cookies, and you know, we're in twenty twenty though, so I have to stop all that. Um, if you. Want to share with me what bad eating habits you have? Please email me at the level with me podcast at gmail.com. That's the level with me podcast at gmail.com. Uh, once again, thank you, Megan, for coming out on the podcast. It's been a Yay. pleasure. Love talking to you. I love you. I love you. Uh, thank you all for listening to the level with me podcast. And please go check out all my social links, which I forgot to mention. That's Game Bro Corey. Everywhere, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, 
Instagram. Check me out on Twitch. I've been streaming a lot. Again, I really have been enjoying streaming. Mostly Smash and Apex. Maybe something crazy here or there. You never know. I'm a crazy dude. And uh, have a great week, bros. Peace. I'm about to go crash. I'm so tired. You're probably going to eat some food. Yeet.